Jay, you went back to school after you left. It took, what, three years for you to get your degree, but you went back and you discuss the difficulty of maintaining focus to go back and get a degree, even if you're not playing professionally, if you've just come out of the program without it. I mean, and you, you had money in your pocket, a successful NBA career, yet you went back. The reality of it is this. Um, different athletes, in particular black athletes, go to college for different reasons. I was at the University of Michigan because I was able to play basketball, therefore they gave me a scholarship. If I wasn't able to play basketball, I wouldn't have got a scholarship to Michigan. Whether my mom couldn't pay for me to go there. So that's why you see, for example, nowadays the top flight black athletes going to major universities and colleges as opposed to black colleges like they did in the 60s and the 70s for that stage, for that opportunity. And let's just be real. When you're recruiting a kid, you know if that kid has an opportunity to possibly go after his freshman year, go after his sophomore year. Or another kid that you say, you know what, he's going to do grunt work for me, he's going to be here four years. We used to joke when I was in college about the white guys on our team. We used to say they were there for free throw percentage and for grade point average. <laughs> We used to joke about that. Now, did I make the dean's list in school? I made the dean's list before. I was an honor roll student in high school. But in college sports, remember, that's a business. And I know you call them student athletes, but I call them semi-pros. And this is why. I could be at the University of Michigan getting a 4.0, and the coach can walk in and say, you know what, Jalen? We're changing our style of play. You really don't fit. So you might need to transfer. They can do that to you. So that becomes a business deal. So for those that are able to take advantage of the deal and make it to the NFL, make it to the NBA, congratulations. But there are way more that are getting lost See, that don't make it See, and don't the, graduate. That's the issue. That, that's it. Because we now have become the only people on earth that will try to tell you education is an impediment to success. That's the dumbest thing anybody's ever heard. Spike? I'd like to say three quick things. I want to piggyback on my man Rose. When you're a professional athlete, excuse me, I mean, when you're in college, but there's a Freudian slip there, <laughs> and you go to a big time D1 basketball football program, that's the job in itself without having to go to class. Yeah, it is. Practice, you got to watch film. You gotta get in the weight room. Then they want to take classes too. And I, and I know a lot of black athletes, and they tell me that these schools, they, they do not encourage the black athlete to take courses that are gonna be hard. And now, before it used to be physical ed, now, it's, now the thing is sports marketing. You watch any game, and they say, and when they show the guys, they say the year where they're from, what's their major? Sports marketing. Boom. They need to be paid. These guys need to be paid. And that's black and white. If the NC2A, the NC2A, they're the biggest pimps around. They are championing athletes. And then, and the follow-up on Dr. Laptrix, Talking about, about the, at here at Morehouse, we established a sports journalism program so we could change some of those numbers and put African American women and men <laughs> in the press boxes here at Morehouse, where Dr. King went, right here. The house. And that is why, oh, you do know the house. And that is why we are, are here. Hang on. Dr. King, remembering 25 years ago on Monday when we honor him with the holiday, it'll be 25 years that we've honored the holiday, and we see the images and the power, and that's why we have the freedom of speech, and all of our panelists are expressing that, which we appreciate. When we come back, it was a question that was posed by Richard Lapchick. The media, how fair? Are all athletes treated the same, given the same coverage, especially when they run into trouble? We'll get into that next. Thank you.